I'm Amanda Howell. I'm the business librarian here at UW-Whitewater. And in this video, I'm going to show you some of the resources that you can use for your Management 301 course. We're going to talk about finding articles and finding company information. So I've started here on the library's homepage, um, but we're going to go to your course research guide. The easiest way to get there is by clicking the Guides tab and then selecting Management from the middle of the page, and then just clicking the link for Management 301. And this guide has a number of the different resources you can use to find articles and company information, as well as some other information. If you need to get in touch with me later, my contact information is on the page here, and the reference desk contact information is also on this page. I'm going to jump to the Finding News and Articles tab. And this lists a number of resources that you can use to find both scholarly articles, trade publications, newspaper articles. Um, I'm going to quickly explain the difference between a scholarly article and a trade publication because a lot of people don't know the difference. So in your business classes, if you're ever writing a research paper, your professor might ask you to find a scholarly article. And what that means is that people like your professors have written a research paper and they've submitted it to a journal. And other people who are, have studied the same kind of topic, they review this paper and they say, okay, make these changes and then we might be able to accept it to the journal. So they make changes, they resubmit it, and then eventually it gets accepted into this journal. So it's a really long process, but what it does is it ensures that the research you are reading is of a really high quality. A trade publication is a little different because it is written by professionals in a specific field and it's written for professionals in that field, but it doesn't go through that peer review process. Um, the trade publication magazines are going to look, a, or they're going to look a little bit more like magazines. Um, they'll sometimes have advertisements. A really good example of this is the Harvard Business Review. So it's of a, these articles are going to be of a really high quality, but they're not those peer reviewed sources. And I'll show you how you can find both kinds of sources in the library databases. On this page, I've also listed a number of the top journals for organizational behavior. And so if you would prefer to search within a specific journal rather than through a whole database, you can do that really easily. I'm going to go ahead and go to the database Business Source Complete so I can show you how to find these specific resources. So, Let's say that I am interested in learning a little bit about contingency theory. You'll notice that I put quotes around my phrase here, and that just tells the database that I want it to find both of those words right next to each other within the article. If I didn't do that, it would retrieve articles that have the word contingency and theory, but not necessarily next to each other. And so this really focuses my results just on what's going to be relevant to my topic. So when I press search, you can see I get about 1,500 articles. I could narrow my search a little more by adding other keywords that might focus this, because usually you want to aim for under 100 results. It just makes it a little easier to manage. So I might add something like organizational behavior or personnel management, something like that. For now, I'm just going to leave it so I can show you the different facets we have. Um, notice that the results are organized by relevance. So you're going to see what the database thinks are the best results up top. But if you just want to see the newest options first, you can click Date Newest. Along the left side, you'll see a number of options that you can use to limit your search even more. So if you know that you need scholarly sources, you can hit this Scholarly Peer Reviewed Journals option. And we threw out about 300 of our results there. But it is important to remember that by checking scholarly sources, we are not including those trade publications, which can still be good resources if that's something your professor will allow. You can also change the date range. So if you only want articles from the last five years or something, you can type that in here. I'm going to uncheck scholarly really quick so that I can show you under source types, you can see We've got academic journals, trade publications, magazines. So if I only wanted a list of the trade publication articles, I could limit that way too. Um, under subject thesaurus term, 
This is a good way to figure out which keywords you could add to your search in order to narrow your search even more. Basically what this does is it says, based on the search you just did, here are some other relevant keywords. And so we could click on one of these, if we clicked on strategic planning, for instance, now we only have 213 articles. So that's another good way to limit this search down a little. I mentioned that we can search within a specific journal rather than just searching the whole database. So I'm going to click over into the Harvard Business Review. And you'll just want to click the first database link under We Found Your Article Online. And over on the right side, you can select a specific date. So if you're looking for an article that you know was published in 2013, you can open that and then find the specific volume it was published in. Or you can use this search within this publication option here. And all you're going to want to do is type in and and then your, your keyword or phrase. So if I'm looking for things on whoops, contingency theory, then I can type that in, and I can see the 10 articles that, were pub that have been published in the Harvard Business Review that discuss contingency theory. So that is a really easy way to narrow your results and just look within a specific publication. So those are just some of the ways you can search for articles. And again, that's going to include peer-reviewed articles, um, trade publications, news articles, and more. So this is what the Finding News and Articles tab is going to be best for. As you are using these sources, make sure you take a look at the Citing Sources tab here. And this walks through APA citations. It's really important that anytime you use a source in a paper or a presentation that you cite that source in order to give credit to the original author. And so this page has a video tutorial walking through some of the major sources you're, you're likely to use. But it also has written examples for books, for journals. Um, there is a link here for a guide that walks you through how to cite specific business databases because they are going to be cited differently than you would cite a book or something like that. So definitely take a look at this tab as you go through your assignments. I'm going to jump to the company information tab now to show you a few of the resources we have for finding company info. One that I would recommend starting in is called Reference USA. So when I open this, what this database allows us to do is find a list of companies that are located in a specific geographic region. Um, and so I'm going to click the US Businesses option in the lower left corner. And you can just do a quick search. Um, so if you're looking for a specific company or com all of the companies in a specific city or state, this is an option. But what I think is a better way to do it is to go to the custom search. And you can use these options on the left side of the page to limit your search to focus it just on the specific types of companies you're interested in. So if I wanted companies that were related to pets in some way, I could do a keyword search here. And it's going to bring back all of the SIC codes, or you can limit to NAICS codes, and those are unique identifiers for industries. Um, it's going to bring back all of the codes that are related to pets. So if I want to find all of the pet shops and all of the pet supply wholesale businesses in Madison, Wisconsin, then I can click those two options and then I can click the geography section to limit to a specific city. And it's going to add that to my search down here. So I'm going to just jump to Wisconsin and then type in Madison. And it will just retrieve the results when I click view results that meet those requirements. That They have to be either a pet shop or a pet wholesale um, store in Madison. And so it's retrieved 13 results. We can get some more information on these companies just by clicking the company title, the company name there. We can see where it's located. 
If we go down, we can get some information about how many people work at this specific location, um, how big their sales volume is. If I go down even further, we can get some information on their business expenditures, so about how much they spend in accounting, um, on payroll, different things like that. So this is a really useful way to get some just general company information to figure out which companies are located in a specific area. But if you want some more information, then we can go back to our company information tab here and you can use either the databases LexisNexis Academic or Privco. LexisNexis is best for public company information and Privco is for private companies. So I'll show you both of these. What they're going to do is give us just a really quick overview again of these companies. If you click the Get Company Info box, you can just search by company name. And so I'm just going to look for PetSmart. If you're not sure if something is a public or private company, it's a good idea to start in LexisNexis because it will tell you really quickly. You can see I searched for PetSmart. It retrieved the three best results. And if we look under company type, we can see that it's a public company. And you are usually going to look for the parent option. So I'm going to click PetSmart, and I can get some information on this first page here, such as how many total employees they have, um, what their stock has been doing, a really brief business description, who their top executives are. But over on the left side, you can look for information such as what brands this company has, um, who are considered their competitors. This you always want to take with a grain of salt because you can see it's bringing back things like Staples and Office Depot and it is looking at a number of those SIC and NAICS codes and making determinations as to which are the most relevant competitors. So they're not always super accurate. You always want to take a look at these and think through, okay, is this really a direct competitor for the, the research that I'm doing? You can also use this in the news section to look for news articles that have recently been published on a specific company. And so if you want articles on the marketing practices of PetSmart, you can go to the marketing section here and it will retrieve the most recent articles on that topic. The last section that is really useful is this financial overview section and it will retrieve all of their financial statements. Public companies are required to release their financial statements to the SEC. And so we've got the last three years of data and you can use this just to look at trends over time. Is this company generally doing better or worse than they were a few years ago? And so there's a lot of benefit to be gained by looking at these financial statements. So that's how we can look for public company information. If we go back to our guide, we can click the Privco link. And when you use Privco, you will need to sign in. And so I'm going to click in this yellow box here and log in with my information. And you can create an account um, with your UWW email address and then you'll be able to access all of the information that Privco has. So I'm going to look for information on Petco. And when I do my search, you can see that Petco is a brand of the private company Petco Animal Supplies. So I'm going to click this because this would be considered the parent company. And this looks a little different from LexisNexis, but it's going to have a lot of the same information. So I can get a really brief company profile. I can get some information such as their revenue growth rate, their employee growth rate, um, where they're located, some contact information. As I scroll down, I'm getting a list of competitors again. If we go down even further, we will see some financial information, which is really pretty amazing because a lot of private companies you won't be able to find anything for. Um, private companies don't have to release their financial statements, and so any information we get is really useful because most people won't have access to this. 
If we scroll down even further, it's going to put some of that financial information into graphs so you can get a good look at are they doing better or worse. It becomes really easy to make that determination by looking at these graphs. As we scroll down to the very bottom, it's going to have some more information, um, mergers and acquisitions information, what companies they've purchased. Um, you can also get some more of a company profile. You can see it's got some information, business overview, revenue, expenses. Not all companies are going to have the same information listed here. It's going to vary and not all private companies are going to be in Privco. Um, so just keep that in mind. If it's a really little mom and pop business, you're not going to find much information on it. You're going to have to be a little more general and look for industry information rather than a specific company's information. And again, you can go to the Citing Sources tab on your guide and go to that business Citing Business Databases guide to figure out how to cite sources like LexisNexis and Privco. And so those are some of the resources you can use through the library for finding articles and finding company information. All these resources can be used on and off campus. You just have to log in with your NetID and password if you're off campus. And if you have any trouble logging in or using any of these databases, please feel free to get in touch with me. Again, my contact information is here on the home tab of your guide. So send me an email or give me a phone call and I'm happy to meet with you and answer any questions that you have. So thanks.